Thank you. Um, we're going to go ahead and get started. It's 12 p.m. Uh, I am Jody West, and I am the coordinator of the PPCL ECHO. I want to welcome everyone. Uh, this is our sixth session, and uh, we're going to do our best to stay on this agenda today. Um, I'm going to uh, go through, and Dr. Olivier is our facilitator. Uh, I will go through brief introductions, and then uh, I will present the case presentation today. It was submitted anonymously, so I'll go ahead and do the case presentation today. And then once that is done, we'll go through, um, I'm sorry, we'll start with the didactic. I'm jumping ahead of myself. The didactic will be presented by Courtney Malvo, and then we'll do case presentations. And um, we'll look at recommendations and wrap up uh, for our next, for our, this session. So um, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself real briefly. I am the coordinator for the ECHO, but the ECHO is um, uh, educational and training opportunity through the provider to provider consultation line. We are a statewide no cost telehealth or tele consultation program that focuses on pediatric and perinatal mental health. So providers across the state can contact us and um, we will then assist with either resources, connection to a psychiatrist, um, connection to a social worker who can discuss treatment modalities as well as uh, assist with um, services in the community in which the patient lives. So we, this is our phone number. We're statewide. If you scan that barcode, uh, that QR code, it'll bring you to our website. And these echo sessions are part of that, a part of the PPCL program. Um, Dr. Olivier, can you lead us through the rest of the Sure thing. Good afternoon, everyone. And I'm Dr. Olivier over here in Lafayette, Louisiana, and I am a psychiatrist here in private practice at Bloom Mental Wellness. I'm the facilitator for this session, which means I keep track of the clock and the schedule. Um, I will call on our hub team members to reintroduce themselves right now uh, to the group. Um, you've already met Jody West, who's our program coordinator. Uh, how about Katie Abair? You want to introduce yourself? Hey, everybody. I'm Katie Abair. I'm a perinatal mental health therapist, and um, I work in private practice at Bloom Mental Wellness. Um, so thanks for having me. Thanks, Katie. How about Dr. Zena? Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Paula Zena. I am one of the uh, uh, consultants for the perinatal program. I'm, I work at Tulane in the Department of Psychiatry. Um, lots of experience with home visiting, currently doing work with children exposed to violence and grief. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Zena. How about Dr. Finelli? Thanks, Dr. Olivia. Hey, um, Juliana Finelli, uh, infant and early childhood psychiatry and perinatal psychiatry. I will get to work with the PPCL team as a perinatal psychiatric consultant. And I'm also at Tulane like Dr. Zena. Awesome. So that is your hub team. And for the next the, about 15 minutes, I'm going to turn this over to Courtney Malvo to present our didactic presentation, and then we'll follow that up with our case presentation. So Courtney, you can go ahead and take it away. Got it. Hi, everyone. I'm super, super excited to be here. Um, I just want to thank the PPCL team for putting this on. I know it's the first cohort, but I'm hoping that it continues and we continue to learn um, what's needed within the perinatal population. Um, I just want to also thank Sienna too for even asking me um, to put on this presentation. I was super nervous in the beginning, um, but I'm, I'm again, happy to be here. Um, okay, so starting with my presentation, I just wanna be mindful to let you guys know that I'm gonna be using um, mom, mother and mama um, with, with throughout the presentation, but I wanna acknowledge that not all black parents identify as a mother. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, so perinatal mental health in Black women, strategies for care and advocacy. We can move on. So today's learning objectives will be in uh, just an uh, overview of perinatal mental health disorders, um, understanding the impact in Black mothers, and of course, exploring of uh, treatment options and advocacy strategies. So what is perinatal mental health disorders? Ultimately, it's PMADs occurring during pregnancy up to a year postpartum. So what do we know about it so far is that one in five mothers um, and one in 10 fathers experience depression 
or anxiety during the perinatal period. Um, I want to acknowledge baby blues first because though it's not a disorder, um, it is a normal um, uh, response or hormonal fluctuation following childbirth. Though it peaks three to five days postpartum, it only lasts 14 days or two weeks. So following that two week period, if mama is reporting um, some significant symptoms that's just ultimately impacting the way that she functions as a mama, there's something else going on and, and she needs to um, follow up with treatment. So what those disorder, disorders consist of is perinatal depression, perinatal bipolar disorder, perinatal anxiety and panic disorder, um, of course, perinatal OCD, perinatal PTSD, and of course, perinatal psychosis, which in this particular situation, it's considered a medical emergency. We move forward. So what are some common disorders in um, symptomology with, in Black mothers? And what do they report, right? So uh, data shows that postpartum depression and anxiety um, are more, more than double in Black women compared to their white counterparts. Also, the risk factors for Black women in living in rural communities um, are smaller cities with rates showing 80% higher um, compared to their white counterparts. Um, and some symptoms that are basically disclosed or just, you know, mentioned are some irritability, um, self-criticism, self-hate, or self um, somatic symptoms such as fatigue, insomnia, decreased libido, and anhedonia. But also too, you may hear um, statements such as my nerves have been bad, or um, I've just been really angry or on edge uh, most of the time. Um, is it just important to just look or listen for those type of phrases because it can be, of course, you know, described differently. Next slide, please. So what are the risk factors, right? Um, what we already know is that parenthood um, is a challenging trans transition. And for Black mothers, the presence of significant factors can amplify its impact. So uh, a few uh, risk factors here are prior history of mental illness and family history of mental illness, um, higher risk of pregnancy, and I meant to say childbirth complications, um, limited access to healthcare, uh, lack of social support, um, of course, trauma and exposure to violence, um, mistrust in the healthcare system, um, implicit bias, which I feel um, ultimately we need to learn to just work on checking ourselves, checking what's coming up within ourselves when we are meeting with different Black moms in the perinatal space. Um, of course, substance abuse, um, insurance availability or gaps in medical coverage, shame and stigma, which I'll touch on a little bit later. And of course, social determinants of health health, which is the spaces um, in which these mothers live in, which contribute greatly to the impact of the perinatal um, um, experience, like you know, not having safe housing or transportation, racism, discrimination, and violence, lack of education or income, you know, um, access to nutritious foods, um, polluted air and water, of course. Next slide, please. So what are some statistics um, nationwide right now, right? So according to CDC, um, Black women are three times more likely to die from a pregnancy-related cause uh, than white women. Almost 50% of Black mothers will experience a maternal mental health condition. Um, suicide is the leading cause of maternal death during the postpartum period as Black women are two times more likely to report suicidal ideations than white women. Next slide, please. Um, I wanted to bring it back a little bit um, based in Louisiana, because of course that's statistics nationwide, but we have a lot of work to do y'all <laughs> in Louisiana. So Louisiana is ranked 46 in the nation of maternal mortality with 60.9 deaths per 100,000 births, which is higher than a national average. Though we're not last, this just shows us more work to be done. Um, in 2020, uh, black, women, black women represented 37% of births in Louisiana, while also representing 62% of deaths. Um, ultimately, 80% were potentially preventable. Um, black women in Louisiana were two times more likely to die than white women. I wanna touch on a little bit with the uh, 2024 Maternal Mental Health State Report Card. 
this is something uh, that's provided by the Policy Center um, for Maternal Mental Health. And I suggest you guys to just check it out. Super cool. <laughs> just a, again, just a, a graphic to kind of show like where we're at. But right now we have an average of a D plus, ultimately based on um, providers and programs, uh, screening and screening reimbursement, um, insurance coverage and treatment. I do want to acknowledge, though, that we have a B right now in insurance coverage and treatment, ultimately with the expansion of Medicaid. So we're, we're, we're getting there, but we have a lot more to do. Next slide, please. Okay, the good part, treatment and advocacy. Slide. So before I even touch on treatment and advocacy, um, I want to just highlight uh, how Black mothers show up when it's time to seek help, right? So despite being twice as likely to experience uh, maternal mental health conditions compared to white women, Black women are only half as likely to receive care um, and ultimately due to stigma and shame. So seeking mental health treatment is already stigmatized, uh, particularly in Black communities, it is viewed as a sign of weakness. You know. Um, rather it's being able to just identify that there is a problem that's shame there right and then worrying how we are being perceived um, by the providers or by the health and professionals but ultimately that continues to feed the stigma it's like a constant you know cycle so also cultural beliefs I mean when I was coming up it's interesting, right? I'm, I'm in the field, but when I was coming up, no talking about what's going on in, in the home. Um, we go to God about it, ultimately. Um, but of course, I pu pulled away from that um, because there's work to be done. We need the help. We need the treatment. Um, we need to ultimately get out of our own way, but we also need to feel safe in the spaces, in these sacred spaces that we believe to be, um, to receive that help. Um, and also, too, uh, I, I feel like sometimes um, it's, it's very difficult for us to kind of show up or be a disruptor or to break those cycles because it's a lot of pressure. You know, it's, it's easier to just be in that cycle. But my hope is that um, through this training that, you know, you guys just open your eyes to it and just meet these mothers where they are and let them know that they don't have to suffer in silence. Um, and ultimately we can, we, we will see a difference overall. And of course, I wanna to touch on the strong black woman stereotype, again, in our way, but ultimately it's it's what, what has kept us resilient for so long. Um, but we ultimately it blocks where, where we need to go and what we need to do. But it's, I just wanna make you all aware that it it's there. It's, it's gonna consistently be there. Um, and of course, you guys know that a lot of this is, can be traced back to slavery. And of course, considering now the ongoing system, systematic you know, oppression and racism that's going on now. Um, next slide, please. So treatment, first and foremost, screen. Let's screen, let's provide screenings. So according to PSI, we have to screen multiple times. Um, first prenatal visit, at least once in second trimester, at least once in third trimester, um, six week postpartum obstetrical visit or the first postpartum visit, um, repeated screenings at six and or 12 months in OB and PCP settings and three, six, nine and 12 month pediatric visit. Um, my approach uh, is patient centered, right? It's important that we refer out refer to a certified perinatal clinician, or if there's no one, any available, refer to counseling. Um, we have to just establish a collaborative care model to where we are, you know, creating these new relationships, these trusting network of providers um, from PCPs to psychiatrists, nurse practitioners, doulas, care managers, um, connect. It's time for us to network, you know, and that's how we provide quality care. Um, and also to community-based resources, connecting with our local outpatient mental health um, clinics or community mental health clinics, the FQHCs. Um, they are the ones that have the, the case, manage, case management component. Um, we as clinicians can't do it all. 
We would love to. It will, it would be wonderful <laughs> if we could, but we just cannot. So that's why these um, services are provided outside of our services. Um, and of course, medication management. Again, having literally your uh, reproductive psychiatrists or psychiatric nurse prat practitioners on call to refer out. Um, because again, it's not an area of expertise and we don't have to do the work. We have professionals for that. Um, uh, social supports, assessing social supports and referring to support groups. Ultimately, getting through the, the perinatal period or the postpartum period, I feel, is through the social supports. Kind of seeing who's around, who's in that mom's corner, um, who's going to be able to best support her um, as she navigate this new experience, this new transition, whether she's a first mom she didn't have five kids <laughs> and she's pregnant again. She, she still needs the help. Um, sleep. Sleep, to me, in my opinion, is the number one um, treatment um, option, the number one treatment approach. Moms need to sleep. I don't care if it's broken up. I don't care if it's two hours here. She's up two hours. She needs to rest. And ultimately, to get that sleep is through uh, assessing her social supports. Um, and uh, connecting with support groups or other individuals that can, um, I don't know, just help her in her home, you know? It's just, I don't know. I, I just feel sleep is like ultimately that that number one priority in the postpartum space. Next slide, please. So here are different screening tools uh, for PMAS or perinatal mental health disorders. Um, so of course, your ideal screeners are pediatricians. That's who mom is going to see the most um, as she transitioned from um, birth to one year postpartum. Um, the uh, Edinburgh EPDS, most commonly used validated screening tool, is the one that I provide um, in, in during my intake. Um, but due to being created and informed by white research participants, it is recommended that a lower screening cutoff score um, be used for Black women. Currently, it's 10, um, but of course, use your clinical judgment, uh, listen to what mom is saying, and just ultimately tap in. Also, there's the patient health questionnaire, PHQ-9, uh, postpartum depression screening scale, um, the, the GAD-7. That's the one that I use, but I'm mentioning another one too. So um, also the, the mood disorders questionnaire, but there's, um, I forgot to include this one, the PAS, is the perinatal anxiety screening scale. That one is a little bit more comprehensive because it can um, also assess for OCD too. So it's just, again, it's create maybe, I don't know, a, a, a chart or something with all of these skills in there and just make sure that they're on hand when you are meeting with these mothers. Next slide, please advocacy, the best part, right? Um, so Medicaid expansion, of course, you guys know um, that Medicaid has uh, expanded with, I think it's up to a year postpartum, um, but over half of all births in Louisiana are, cover are covered through Medicaid. Um, many of us are meeting with Medicaid recipients, right? That, that's obviously, that's the majority um, that are coming through our offices. Me in particular, I am a Medicaid provider. That makes up the bulk of my um, clientele now. Um, and y'all, you know, we have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of work to do. And I get it and I understand, you know, Medicaid, when it comes to the paying, you know, uh, Medicaid doesn't pay enough or whatnot, which they do not. So again, I feel like I have a job to do in the advocacy part of that area. Um, but also I, I'm meeting so many moms that are being turned around or just not being a addressed or not being helped and not being listened to, or they can't find providers that accept Medicaid, or they can't find providers that is also certified in period of mental health. It's just a lot. <laughs> but um, I feel like it's it's important. It's a, there's more for us to do. There's a job to be done. And next is the period of mental health trainings, right? So we need more culturally competent, trauma-informed, certified clinicians and providers. Um, I've included in the resources a new database that was uh, recently released by Maternal Mental Health Leadership Alliance, and it literally brings you through all of the current trainings that, is, that are being provided um, that you can just literally sign up for. But it's, it, it's a, it's a one-stop shop. But also, too, just immediately go to PSI, Postpartum Support International. I serve as the co-chair of the Louisiana chapter. Um, and I'm going to advocate for PSI to the end of time. 
um, they are the ones that introduced me to this this to this specialty and has been um, part of my support throughout uh, the past three years. Also, partnering with community organizations, uh, investing in Black women-led community-based organizations. I've included a few in resources. I feel like I've missed so many others. But again, I was trying to, you know, put so much together for you guys. Um, and, and of course, policy advocacy. I was just to learn about this bill that was passed where it urges um, and requests LD LDH to assist in the development of public service campaign to foster awareness and education in perinatal mental health care. Next slide, please. Yeah, I thought I was done. So next few slides are just resources. Um, I tried to, again, put so much together. I didn't want it to be so long with stuff, but um, start with PSI. PSI is, is your friend. <laughs> That's the one um, that'll get you exactly what you need and, and how to move forward. Um, I, again, I want to thank you guys for this opportunity. I, I hope that it literally just opened your eyes to, to realize that there's, again, work to be done. We have to show up differently. We decided, we 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 chose this profession because we wanted to help. Um, and obviously you guys see that there is a help particularly amongst black women. Um, we're dying at high rates, which is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I, I'm, I'm at the point now, and it's only been a short period of time where I'm just tired of moms coming in, black moms in particular coming in and saying, you know, um, I wasn't listened to or I was ignored or my concerns were minimized or reduced. It's, it's too much, um, but again, Thank y'all. I'm happy to be here and I hope to connect with you all. Thank you so much, Courtney. And just to remind everybody that the slides will be sent to you after, after today, you'll get a copy of the slides because there's some great resources listed on there. And so thank you so much for that, Courtney. We appreciate you. Great talk. And thank you again to Courtney for presenting and Jody for presenting. <laughs> appreciate you guys. Hey, thanks everyone. I appreciate the, uh, collaboration. This is very challenging presation for sure or the case presentation. Um, we went ahead and put in the chat the link for the surveys. If you need CMEs or CEUs, if we complete that survey, our next session will be on Tuesday, August 27th. Um, we always need case presenters. So if you have a particularly challenging case or something that continues to come up, it doesn't even have to be about a specific patient. It could just be about a presentation or um, an issue that comes up for you, please consider submitting a case presentation so that way you can get input from all of the knowledge base that's in this group. Um, our next session will be presented by Dr. Vincent and it'll be about addressing safety concerns in the perinatal period. So thanks again. We'll stay on if anyone has any questions or you can always email me. Um, but thank you to Courtney and for our case submitter and um, thank you all for attending and I hope you have a good rest of your day. Bye everybody. Thanks you guys.